Welcome to Reading Under the Covers, a romance novel podcast. I'm Francesca from Under the Covers book blog, and I am so excited to be sharing with you my favorite Kindle Unlimited books that I read in the month of July. Actually, it was a great month for Kindle Unlimited books. Definitely got my money's worth. Out of 20 books that I read in the month of July, 10 of those are Kindle Unlimited books. And overall, I actually really enjoyed all of them. So let's go quickly through some of them. You might have heard me talking about some of these already, maybe on another episode of the podcast, on one of our live shows on Novel Nights, or definitely on the Under the Covers community, especially in the Extra Byte podcast. If you still don't know what Kindle Unlimited is, it is is a service that Amazon provides and it's basically a subscription. You can read as many books, basically unlimited, of, of all the books that are in the Kindle Unlimited library. So when an author chooses to put the book on Kindle Unlimited, you're able to then borrow basically that book and you can only have a certain amount of books that you've downloaded onto your Kindle at the time, but there is no limit on how many you can actually read. So if you're really fast or if you wanna start something and maybe it's not for you and you wanna just get something different, you can start as many as you want. The only limitation you have is how many you can have on your Kindle at one time. I've been a Kindle Unlimited subscriber for many years. It's a service that I always really enjoy having. I think also over the years, it's become a service that actually has a lot of books that I want to read as more and more authors as well as publishers are putting the books on Kindle Unlimited. And my favorite thing about it is it gives me kind of like a guilt-free option for trying out new authors, new genres, something that I may not know how I'm going to like it. It gives me that freedom to try it out without feeling like I'm spending money on it. Once you read the book on Kindle Unlimited and you return it, it's no longer on your Kindle, but if you absolutely love the book and you want to have it on your Kindle, you can always buy the book as well. So just because a book is on Kindle Unlimited doesn't mean that you cannot purchase it and have it in your Kindle library. I will also be sure to leave a link to our post of our favorite Kindle Unlimited books of 2024 so that you can check out some of our previous favorites as well. And it will have also links to all the ones that I talk about here today. So without any further delays, let's just jump right into the books. I have lots of things to share with you and I'm excited for you to find maybe something new to try out on Kindle Unlimited. The first one is The Dead Guy Next Door by Lucy Score. And if you tuned in to the podcast when we were talking about our June favorites for Kindle Unlimited reads, you may remember that Suzanne had mentioned this book to me. It was actually on her TBR. And as soon as she told me that this would be something that I would enjoy because it's similar to the Charlie Davidson series by During the Jones, I knew I had to drop everything that I was reading and just pick it up. And I'm happy to report that that is exactly right. If you are a fan of Charlie Davidson and Dorinda Jones, you definitely will enjoy this story. It does have a very slight paranormal element. The heroine is a psychic and she basically gets visions of future events. But this reads very much like a cozy mystery. Our heroine ends up an amateur sleuth investigation with private investigation and it all stems from the murder of her next door neighbor. She had a vision of that murder before it happened and then once it does happen it proves to her that she does have this ability that she always thought it was hallucinations or it was not important so this is the thing that tells her yes you do have this power and she teams up with this sexy hot private investigator to figure out what happened to her next door neighbor and what kind of shady business he was involved in and how he ended up dead of course there is a romance with the private investigator and it is a faster romance it's not as slow burn as with the charlie davidson series so i will say that much faster pace on that with this one there is sex in this book If I had to have one complaint about the romance part is it does feel a little bit insta-lovey, but the connection between these two characters also reminded me in a lot of ways of Stephanie Plum's series by Janet Ivanovich. So how, whether it's Ranger or Morelli and Stephanie Plum and that connection that's instantly there, the chemistry's there. So just acting on it is the only thing that's different in this book, which as a romance reader, I cannot complain. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. It's super fun. If you're looking
looking for a funny urban fantasy, then this is definitely one that you should check out. I have done a whole list of funny urban fantasies that you can also look at here on the podcast, but I will leave a link also to the blog because we did mention even more on the blog than we did on the podcast. So definitely check those out. I love funny urban fantasies, and this is a perfect time of year to be reading one. There are also certainly more books in the series, but I only read the first one. I definitely want to read more. So maybe that's going to be a project, maybe like one a month for the next couple of months. The next one is the first in a series. It's called A Rivalry of Hearts by Tassandra Odette. This is the first book in the Faye Flings and Corset Strings series. I had not read this book. I came across it as I was working on the book database, which is a feature that we maintain for our Under the Covers community. We do have a release calendar on there. And as I was adding books to this release calendar and working on my picks for the books that I would highlight for the new releases episode here on the podcast, I saw this one and number one, I love the cover. And once I read the blurb, I just couldn't pass it up. I had to read it. So I took a chance. I had never heard of this author before either. Although she has released many books, this is not her first series. And it's actually a series that is related to some of her other ones. I can attest that it's totally fine if you want to start here. I was not lost. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. So it is a spinoff that you can jump right into it. I think it's more of the other series are also set in the same same kind of universe, but not necessarily related. Now, that may be that we see some characters that they might have already gotten their HEA in another series, and I just didn't notice that. But if that is the case, it was very well done. There was nothing missing, and you can totally start here just like I did. So in this book, we have two rival writers. Our heroine is a romance author, and she basically writes Face Mud. Our hero is Faye himself, and he writes poetry. And she was technically the big name author that they organized this book tour for. But when she gets there, she finds out that he's also an author part of the tour and they're going to be basically traveling together. At the beginning of this tour, they're also told that there is a prize at the end of the tour and whoever gets the most sales is going to be the winner of a publishing contract, which both of them financially really need. So as the tour gets on the way, he's definitely the one that has the longer lines and more people coming to see him. And and on a drunk night, she gets a little desperate and a little scared that she's not going to be able to win that publishing contract. So she makes a bet with a fae, which they tell you never to do. And that is that whoever seduces the most people during the tour is going to have to forfeit the publishing contract. So she thinks that she can do better at that, even though she has no experience and all of the sex that she's writing in her books, she hasn't actually tried it herself. When I tell you that this was such a fun, spicy enemies to lovers, It's great if you like academic rivals and quirky heroines especially, but also it had vibes of actual friends to lovers because they really developed this really nice friendship between them. And it's kind of also, I would call it a road trip romance because they are going on this tour together and staying at different hotels and seeing different parts of the world, which I really appreciated because it gave me an overview of this universe that the author has created in this series. And it is interconnected with other series that are also in that same world. So I am super excited to dive more into some of those backlist titles. That is the Fair Isle trilogy and the Entangled with Faye series. So I'm super excited to have that and have found a new favorite author. I really enjoyed Tassandra Dett's writing style. It's really flowy, fast, very addictive and easy to digest. It was a 418 pages book and I just flew right through it. So I highly suggest that you check it out. I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to reading the next one in this series and definitely going back and reading more from this author. Next is another favorite of mine, Change of Heart by Kate Canterbury. This would basically be if Grey's Anatomy and The Wedding Crashers had a baby except Wedding Crashers is gender swapped. Our heroine and her best friend, who both of them are doctors or surgeons, I should say, they are the Wedding Crashers and it is sort of their thing. They go on vacation from their busy and super rigorous schedules and lives and together they just crash weddings. And at each one of those weddings that they crash, they have a one night stand, they have rules, especially never to sleep with somebody from the wedding party. But at this last wedding that they were crashing right before going back to their normal lives, 
our heroine is so attracted to the best man of the wedding that she just has to go for it and he just thinks that she's a guest at the party. Now this was during the summer and the next time they see each other is when the new surgical residents are coming in and as she's meeting her new team they come face to face with each other. She's the leading surgeon and he is one of her residents. Of course that makes their relationship completely forbidden, off limits and they have to navigate that as they're trying to hide what they feel for each other and what happened in the past and just see if they can make it work in the future. Now, I absolutely love this book. It had everything you could hope for. It's emotional, it's sexy, it's steamy. It has a hero that basically falls first. Plus, I would say one of the sweetest heroes you're going to read in a while. All the little details of how much he really took care of her, even when they couldn't be together. I absolutely adored it. I love the relationship. I love the development of it. I love how they really got to know each other. So if you're looking for a medical romance, workplace romance, very light on the forbidden romance, then definitely this is going to be the one for you. The next one is actually a cozy mystery, and it's Dead to Rights by Jasmine Webb. It's book one in the Mackenzie Owens Mysteries series. And in this one, our heroine inherits a house and a bookstore from her father in Cornwall. So in order for her to inherit and take ownership, she has to basically sell everything she owns and travel to Cornwall. When she does that and she reaches there, there's a minor misunderstanding and she's not 100% owner of both of those. She is 50-50 with her grandmother, who also had no idea that she had a granddaughter. And they realize that they have to, at least for now, live together and kind of see how they're going to deal with this situation. But their plans to move forward are immediately deviated when a dead body shows up at the bookstore and the two principal suspects are the two of them because as owners of the bookstore it seems the easiest way is to just blame it on them so they have to team up and work together to uncover the mystery and find the real killer so they can clear their name this is a great one if you're looking for a cozy mystery with like a great grandma character kind of like with stephanie plum again and grandma mazer plus what millennial doesn't dream of just having a bookstore and a cute little house on the beachside town of cornwall i mean it sounds just adorable. What more can you ask for except not to have a dead body to deal with? So it definitely was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and I'll be reading more from this author for sure. The next one, I'm only going to touch on it real quick because when I read it was on Kindle Unlimited in July and now it's already out of the Kindle Unlimited system. But maybe you want to mark it down and may come back to Kindle Unlimited. So keep an eye out for it. It is a historical erotic romance. It's called The Bootlegger's Bounty by Adriana Herrera. We have a jazz singer on the run, we have a rum runner on the edge, and a gangster ready to risk it all. Kind of has pirate vibes a little bit as well. The heroine Rosalia wants to escape her island so she can go sing in a New York City nightclub. So she ends up aligning herself with these two ruthless men that she's seeking passage on the ship with. Of course, once she's on the ship, there's a lot more going on and they end up going in an adventure together, not only as it relates to an actual bounty, but also it's a polyamorous relationship between the three of them. This is definitely a steamy one with diverse characters it's also a very fast read and ultimately I did enjoy it. I always am on the lookout for historical romances that are different from other things that I have read and I definitely enjoyed this one. I'll be on the lookout for more books set in like 1920s prohibition time. The next one is one that I've wanted to read for a while. I absolutely love the covers of this series and every time I run across them on Amazon I just remind myself that I wanted to read them and that is Getting It On With Gargoyles by Hazel Mack. It is not my first gargoyle romance but it's probably the one that I've enjoyed the most I have to say and one of the things that I really loved about this story is the fact that it involves a small town that is basically a quaint town full of paranormal creatures it gave me the impression of Midnight Texas by Sherlyn Harris I didn't read that book but I did watch the tv show and it kind of had that vibe especially because the town of Ever is a haven for monsters basically and they're all looking for their favorite mate. In the story we have three sisters who just happen to come across this map that's leading them to a town called Ever and according to an internet search the town doesn't exist. As they're driving around trying to find this town they get help from a gas station owner who is the sexy hero of this story and they quickly learn that neither him nor any of the people in 
ever are actually humans. But then again, neither are they and they didn't know that. Basically, when there is a supernatural in this town that is calling to their fated mate, they are drawn to the place. And this gas station owner, who is a gargoyle, was the one looking for his fated mate, and one of the sisters happened to be that person. I think one of my favorite things about a fated mate's romance, it's just the ease that the relationship can have. And sometimes that's easier when they're both paranormal and they kind of know the rules. In this story, that wasn't the case. However, our sexy, dominant, possessive gargoyle with a nice wingspan certainly made that much easier on the heroine. Now, as much as there is a cute romance between the two of them and I really enjoyed it and I also see the setup for the sisters books as well which I'm super excited about but there is a bit of a mystery and some paranormal danger and trouble going on with the town itself in this story which I also really enjoyed it's more of that low stakes type of paranormal romance and I would say if you enjoy the stay a spell series by Julia Cross this would be a good series to try as well and this book in particular especially if you love a cinnamon roll hero now from something kind of sweet we're going to go to something more toxic and the next one that I'm going to recommend is I wish I would have told you by Whitney G this is the first book in the Forbidden Wishes series I read the second book already a few months back and I had to go back Back and read this one I thought I was going to skip it altogether but then I saw the author posting about this book and I've already done a reel on what I thought about it it's so addictive it's so good I would almost want to tell you to go in blind but knowing what it was about is what got me to read it so I'm just going to tell you because that's what I saw the author posting about and got me to pick it up it is set in high school although you really can't tell it feels more like just a new adult set in college but it is high school age the hero of the story is the star quarterback and he is our heroine's twin sister's boyfriend and yes I enjoyed it I loved it it was so toxic it was so taboo but it was so good so addictive so angsty I couldn't put it down so I definitely think you should check it out if you're in the mood for any of those things the next book that I read was Brubies by Cynthia St. Aubin and Kerrigan Byrne this is book two in the Townsend Harbor series and this series is also one that I recommended book one in our June recommendations so I did start reading it and I picked up book two right away I probably will be diving into book three very soon as well they're very light-hearted kind of contemporary romances so if you're looking for something that will just put a smile on your face in between darker books definitely check out this series it doesn't take itself too seriously which is what I enjoyed I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this one because the the hero of this story was the boyfriend of the heroine in the first book. So he's kind of like the town sheriff. He's very straight laced. He also belongs to one of like the founding families of the town. So I was not sure how much I was going to like his character, but I have to say that he did hook me in this book, especially I think because of his complete opposite heroine for the story. So our heroine is an East Coast elite Ivy League trust fund kid with the body of a Bond girl and she basically flees all that life of expectation and executive boardrooms to follow her true love which is coffee and she finds herself on the Washington coast which is the mecca for all things coffee related and to the seaside touristy town of Townsend Harbor where she decides to open her sex positive and bikini themed coffee shop her grand opening is a success until the county sheriff comes in and shuts her down like i said the sheriff is the straight lace always helping out breaking up fights and doing everything for everybody else kind of person now after his breakup again from book one he's been basically having nameless one night stands and usually out of town and one of those just happened to have been with Darby who he had no idea had purchased the land that she opened her coffee shop on and now he's coming in to shut her down. As you can imagine they're two complete opposites there's definitely some feuding going on about the fact that he wanted the land and she ended up buying it. There's also the town's history and how open they are to accepting some of the more sex positive things that she's bringing to the town. All of that found family and small town little bit of bickering vibes so I did enjoy it I probably still enjoy the first book a little bit more than this one but it was still a solid addition in the series and I can't wait to read the third one the next one is do me a favor by Kathy Yardley and this one I think it's also available on audio through Kindle Unlimited so you can check out either the ebook or the audiobook I did do the audiobook and I enjoyed it it has more mature characters they're older characters the hero is a single father but his two kids he's got twins 
They're already grown and even one of them had moved out of the house. The heroine is a widow and after her husband had been sick and ultimately passed away, she inherits a house from her aunt who also passes away and that's where she's trying to settle in and rebuild her life, rebuild her career. She's trying to get back into her career of ghostwriting cookbooks and overall figure out where she can stand again on her own two feet thinking nothing of a romantic relationship even. But then the cute farmer slash handyman slash single father nearby comes and completely shakes up all of her neat plans. This one was more of an understated kind of romance. I think it's very easygoing. It felt very natural for the characters, so it's not super explosive, but it's also not closed door. I was fully expecting it to be closed door because it is a slower burn romance. I think it would have been fine regardless one way or the other, but but I was still happily surprised that it was not a closed door. And ultimately, these two characters really felt like they meshed well together. The whole town and found family was really cute, especially how she comes in and fully integrates with his family. If you're looking for a sweet read, then definitely check this one out. And then the last book on Kindle Unlimited for the month of July was Pain in the Axe by Daphne Elliott. This is book two in the main Lumberjack series. I have not read the first one, but at once I saw the cover, I just couldn't pass it up. I definitely love me a lumberjack hero or a blue collar hero. I was super excited to read it. I almost really didn't read the blurb before I started reading it. So as soon as the first scene opens up, I got really excited because it turns out it's a second chance romance. They were married at one point and the hero had basically left her because he wanted to move back home and try to help save his family's lumber company. Now all these years later, what's happened is that once he came back, there were a lot of shady things that his father was doing with the company and it ended up that he's had to sell it anyway. And what he doesn't know is that the person that's buying it from him is our heroine that was his ex-wife with a deal that he has to stay on for a year to help with the transition. They go from enemies to flirting to her ending up pregnant and them having to figure out how they're going to navigate that, their past mistakes, the dreams they had forgotten together, and basically fall in love with each other all over again. So if you're into small town romance, grumpy boss heroine and grumpy lumberjack hero, and they happen to be divorced exes with enemies to lovers banter, then you definitely definitely going to enjoy this one. And that's it. That's the books that I read in Kindle Unlimited in the month of July. I definitely enjoyed all of them and I recommend that you check them out. Depending what you're in the mood for, there should be something there to fit your mood. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the books that I have currently checked out on Kindle Unlimited. I have Arrogant Neighbor by Fabiola Francisco, Called to the Deep by Desiree M. Nicoli, Quicksilver by Kelly Hart, and Bakers and Magic by Jay Penner. Of course, I may totally go off track and read something else. Anyway, we'll see how August goes. I would love to hear what you guys have been reading on Kindle Unlimited lately. Send me all of your recommendations and especially if you have some really good ones that are fantasy or paranormal because I'm definitely in the mood for some of those. We're also announcing that we're opening up the podcast for you guys to come in and give us your recommendations. So if you want to send us a voice note with your recommendation, I will leave a link in the show notes down below where you can submit that and you may find yourself listening to your voice and your recommendation here on the Reading Under the Covers podcast. As always, don't forget to follow the blog at underthecoversbookblog.com subscribe to our free weekly newsletter will be in your inbox every single Sunday telling you all of the latest bookish content that we have for you find us on social at UTC book blog on Instagram TikTok X and Pinterest and under the covers book blog on YouTube and Facebook and tune in every Thursday to the novel nights live show from YouTube or Facebook thank you so much for listening guys and we'll see you again in the next one bye mm-hmm.